Ms. Lyle's asked me, he said, Ms. Humphrey, you need to write down the things you want to do in your life. I said, you need to keep a journal. I said, is that a diary? He said, no, just on a piece of paper, write down things you want in your life. So I began to write down some of the things I wanted. I said, I want a house with a fireplace. I said, I want a car that doesn't backfire. I said, I want a wife, a family, and a career. And on the bottom of that list, I wrote, I want a Persian cat. <laughs> I don't know why I thought all wealthy people had Persian cats. <laughs> I'm give me one of those cats. <laughs> Recently I saw a picture with Rick Ross with no shirt on, holding a Persian cat, and he ruined my image of Persian <laughs> But today, over 18 years after getting out of prison, I have everything I wrote down on that list. Except that dang Persian cat. <laughs> my son is allergic to cats. <laughs> So encourage your students to write down their goals so that they have a clear vision of where they're going. That helps create a connection. Another way to create a connection is by participating. You know how schools, they have their dress-up days. As educators, participate. I believe this was Bronco Day, Crazy Sock Day, Christmas, and I'm not sure, maybe. <laughs> yeah. You know, this was dressed as your favorite character day. Where's Waldo? You do these things and you will not be asking, where's the connection? Mr. Lyles told me some things about him that no one knew. That he had been in trouble. He had been in trouble. He was on the verge of going to prison himself. That helped to create that connection. Personal, relevant struggles. We're not perfect. Some of the, oftentimes, there's students that need to know that. Personal pain, loss. The success stories all help to create that connection. Now, step three is very simple. It's just take the time. Mr. Lyles didn't have to do any of the things that he did. He could have been off in his classroom doing absolutely nothing. He chose to come down and find those short amounts of time in order to, to create the connection that he needed that would help change my life. Oftentimes I hear people say in schools, I ain't nobody got time for that. Right? We have to make time. We have to use the time we have to make each moment count. And when young people are down, we have to help them up. Mr. Lyles knew I was at the lowest of my lowest moments. He always dressed me as Mr. Humphrey, gave me that respect. He helped to lift me up when I was down. I want to quickly share a letter that I received from a teacher recently. She said, I have known, or I have something else to share with you. Yesterday, a young man in my class was walking with me on our way back from the library. He asked me, this shows, will you teach me how to read the clock? I replied, you don't know how to read the clock? He said, no, nobody ever really taught me. So with your talk in mind, I said, sure, let's have a lesson right now. Normally, I would have gone to his math teacher and asked him to help, as I am not the best at math type tasks. However, I realized that this child was putting himself out there by admitting that he can't read the clock. I also knew that he had just been diagnosed with asthma and must take an inhaler at certain times each day, so I knew how important it is that he learned to read a clock. I also thought of my 11-year-old nephew, who I'm pretty sure still has trouble with this skill, as well as my one-year-old son, who may very well struggle with, struggle with it someday. But most importantly, your inspirational message Made me stop in that second and think that this was one of those times to ask questions, create a connection, take the time. To me, that wraps up the act strategy. And I want to close with this. Growing up in LA, there was a racetrack. It was called the Hollywood something racetrack. And I believe they did that. They named it that because they would show that racetrack on TV. It was right in the middle of LA, South Central, which no one went to. But I used to walk by that racetrack and think, I wonder if, if there are racehorses in there. Father, I imagine that there was a father racehorse. And that father had been a championship racehorse. And I imagine that that father was having a son one day. And that father stood by proud, waiting on his son to be born. Because in his mind, he wanted his son to go on and become a champion racehorse like he had been. Once his son was born, the father looked at him and he noticed that his, his arms or his legs were all skinny. They weren't championship quality. He looked at his son and he realized that his, 
took his son a little bit longer to stand up than it took most champion race horses. That father walked up to his son, looked him in the face, and said, Son, you'll never be a race horse. In spite of his father's words, that race horse began to walk like a race horse. That's how race horse walk in LA. He walk like a race horse. Soon he began to trot and sprint like a race horse. The day came when he was placed in his first race. He walked out onto the track with his chest pumped up. Walking towards the starting gate, you see people pointing and smiling and pointing at him. In his mind, they were saying, we're putting all our money on you. But as he neared the starting gate, he began to hear what they were saying. They weren't encouraging him. They were laughing at him. He heard someone say, I wouldn't bet on that funny-looking race horse if you gave me the money. His head dropped to his chest, and he turned his head back towards the stable, and he heard, he remembered his father's voice saying, you'll never be a race horse. And then he hears another voice say, whoa, whoa, I'm not giving up on you, don't give up on me. He turns, looks over his shoulder, and he sees the jockey that he forgot about. That jockey looks him in his face and says, I believe in you, let's do this. Race horse goes back to the starting gate, gets into the blocks, and the signal is given to go, and pow, he shoots out of there like a shot, sprinting around that race track. Did he win? Heck no. His dad started acting up. He got Charlie Holmes. He got to the finish line and collapsed. He barely finished. Because he finished. He finished because of that job. He finished because one person refused to give up on him. He finished because one person believed in him. Educators, I believe that each of you are the job have the ability to change the lives of so many more children. As long as you ask questions, create connections, 